Here comes a buck. Pretty good buck. Pretty good buck. It was one of the best days of rut that I've seen in a couple of years. Hey! Hey! I am literally yelling at the top of my lungs, just some sort of loud noise that makes this deer turn and look. Look at these peasants. I wanted to watch one of these peasants and marshawks go at it. That's him, that's him. That's the same buck that just come through here. In the back of my mind, I'm going, is there any way I'm going to be able to get this guy to stop? I couldn't stop him the first time through. Can I stop him the second time through? Hey! flat land and wide open spaces. At first glance, you might not think whitetails, but expert hunter Alan Treadwell and guide Brady Walker of Ducks and Bucks know differently. And we're right here on the Oklahoma border. You know, some of the ground literally sits on the Oklahoma border. These deer come out of Kansas into Oklahoma. That's how close we are. We're right on the line. So it, it's really nice. You get to have a gun in your hand during a lot of the rut, which is pretty deadly combination really. This part of the country is kind of a sleeper state for big whitetail. You come out here and people don't, you look around and where are the deer gonna hide? There's no, there's no cover for them, there's no trees. You know, coming from the Midwest like I come from, you wanna be in a tree stand sitting over a big draw watching something come up eating acorns. You're not gonna find that out here. These deer are in the wide open country and there's no place for them to hide and you don't think there should be deer out here. I know two of my biggest whitetails were taken right near the Oklahoma border one in Kansas and one in North Texas. Both those whitetails were basically Oklahoma strain whitetails. So I can tell you firsthand that uh, Oklahoma whitetails have big bodies and huge antlers. Awaits the barren boundary of Northwest Oklahoma and big deer with ducks and bucks. But first, Alan's checking off a must do. Before we leave, there's a little bit of work I need to do. I need to make sure this old Model 70 is shooting just as good as it was when I put it in the case. Just peace of mind, that old big buck steps out. I wanna know this old dude is on. Get some of these good Winchester shoot and see targets and go put them up and we'll be ready to shoot. One oh two, that'll work. Bingo, pretty good with the naked eye there. Oh yeah, that'll work right there. You know, as hunters, we spend an awful lot of time, awful lot of resources to go out for, for a, just an instant of a big buck to walk out in front of us to be able to have that chance to shoot him, you know? And familiarizing yourself with your rifle, you know, don't just shoot it two or three times and say, that's close enough. Familiarize yourself with it. So when that moment of truth steps out, you know, there's no doubt in your mind that once you pull that trigger, that Winchester's gonna do its job, and that deer is going home in the back of your truck. <laughs> you look good with that broom in your hand, you old sucker. What's going on? <laughs> good to see they you, gave man. You, they gave you another Oklahoma license? They did. Bought it online last night. Man, <laughs> people are crazy. And Alan and I are always joking around, you know, I'm always giving him a hard time about, you know, what he's shooting and not shooting, and telling him the only reason he catches any fish is because his grandpa takes him. He can't catch a fish on his own, obviously. What are you gonna leave for me this year? Uh, you I gonna have, forget anything this year? I brought you, uh, I brought you some coal. I brought you uh, some milk that we got for a wedding present in May. And then, you know, now that he's, he's gotten married and, and moved to Arkansas. By the way, she hasn't kicked you out yet. What do you think I'm doing here? Oh, okay. Uh, I was anxious to get my stuff into the house. It's a home that he leases right there in town. And it works out just perfect for his hunting operation. You know, it's got all the comforts of home, big screen TV, mounts everywhere, comfortable little place, and I love staying there. And it, you know, it's not a big fancy lodge, but it's, it's really, you know, a few miles of some of my places that we hunt. Oklahoma rifle season opens up in the morning. We're getting to a little scouting right around with Brady. We're gonna go down here and uh, 
watch a CRP field. I've been watching a couple really good bucks in. I should catch some of these bucks coming out right here before dark. You can drive these roads and see for miles and miles. You know, if you got a good pair of optics like the red pills that we're using, you know, you can see for miles and see all these deer out. Is that the big nine you say? That's him. Big, tall, wide. Heck of a deer. I'm trying to see the box, box car from here. I had been watching two or three really good bucks, a big nine pointer, and it was in this piece of property that has these two old box cars in it. I said, an old box car? What are you talking about? And he said, man. Okay, I went in there and double checked it. There's nobody living in it other than maybe a rat or two. Of course, me, I'm up for anything. I don't, I don't care if he wants me to sit on an ant hill. I'm gonna be there if I think there's a chance I'm gonna kill a deer. Trains have been a part of hunting since the days of the bison, when hides were shipped to population centers in the east. Now, this pair of abandoned box cars is Alan's post on an often overlooked hunting corridor. He's pretty with that last little bit of sun shining. Yes, he is. We'll start there in the morning and see what happens, you know? Yeah, I don't think you're gonna need your flashlight this morning. That is a bright moon. Reckon them deer will move early, they're gonna be moving midday, you think? I think both. I think you're gonna have some action early. I think they've been on their feet most of the night, but I've also seen some mid-morning and late morning action, too. As long as we're seeing deer moving, I'm, I'm gonna stay in there. Okay. Get a little break, maybe come in and have a bite to eat or something, but I'm gonna stay in there as late as, late as deer are moving anyways. But pretty good buck, pretty good buck. Coming right through here. Winchester's Whitetail Revolution is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Cold Blue, perfecting the science of hunting. Winchester Repeating Arms, the guns that work. Redfield, the soul of the American hunter. And by Browning, the best there is. Oklahoma rut activity, and Alan Treadwell's out for morning one with Brady Walker's Ducks and Bucks. But it's not the first time these two have teamed up. Alan and I met a few years ago, and had talked on the phone a few times, you know, prior to that, and we're kind of trying to work out a, a possible duck hunt, and then we got talking about deer, and I said, hey, you know, why don't you come down and let's, let's shoot one of these big Oklahoma bucks I have running around, and, and he came down and, and harvested a nice buck last year. And, and we've become great friends over the last couple of years, and it's a place that I look forward to coming every single year. As he should. With Okie bucks like Jason Boyette's all-time typical netting 191 and 4 8 and Bill Foster's 247 and 2 8 all-time non-typical, it's no wonder Oklahoma ranks among the top half of states for Boone and Crockett Whitetails. But what a unique little setup and a neat setup that would be, you know, to be able to go out there and, and use these box cars, you know, something the deer go by every day. Any structure that's been there for a long time, but the deer, deer get used to. It's like these pop-up blinds, people go, whoop, there it is, the day before. You can do that with turkeys, you can't do that with deer. It's gotta be there months ahead of time for them to get used to it. Any structure that's there, take advantage of it. Sunrises don't get any better than this, that's for sure. A couple of deer coming in up here. Get over here where I can see them better. A little one horn bug. You reckon them little dudes have been fighting to break that horn off? You know, that first morning of hunting, we've seen a lot of deer. We've seen a lot of does and a lot of small bucks. And once again, when I say small, I don't mean little bucks. I mean immature deer, you know, two and a half, three and a half year old deer. Here's a buck. Here's a buck right here. Boy, he's wide. I need a better look at his side. What is he? A shooter buck for one demographic might not be for another. David Morris delivers a crucial point in proper field judging on this Tecumati trophy tip. I'm David Morris, and I want to talk to you today about field judging a deer. Not to be confused with field scoring where you actually try to come up with a score. We're talking about determining real quickly whether or not that deer is a shooter. And here's what I suggest. You familiarize yourself with what a deer in your area that you would shoot looks like when he's an eight pointer and what a 10 pointer looks like. This basic frame size for an eight and 10. But become familiar with deer in your area, what they look like when they're eights and tens. If he's more than that, you're gonna probably shoot him anyway. To continue this and other conversations with David, go to tecamati.com. Holy cow, that's one of the biggest fixed points I've ever seen. Big old mature body, pretty good buck. Look at him, he's just staring down that doe. 
the rut was obviously in because these guys are chasing around. You know, instead of that box car, we've seen so much activity from us down to the deer moving to, uh, to the hawks flying in the air. And then lo and behold, here comes all these pheasants out. Look right here close. Look at these pheasants. They're just absolutely gorgeous. Look at that sun hitting them. Here comes a marsh hawk. He's gonna swoop them. He sat down right there beside them. Not that I want to see a pheasant get eaten, but that morning I wanted to watch one of these pheasants and marsh hawks go at it. Get around to watch a pheasant get eat. There they go. They're getting out of dodge. Pretty cool sitting out there watching that that morning, you know, and, and that's the kind of stuff that we get to see every single morning that we go hunt. You know, the sun comes up and the world comes to life. You know, and you're out there and you're close to all of that. You know, these deer have settled down quite a bit. We ended up coming out just a little bit for lunch, just, just out and back in, just to grab a bite to eat. But I wanted to be out there as much as possible because it was one of the best days of rut that I've seen in a couple of years. How'd it go? <laughs> Deer. It was a beautiful morning oh, weather-wise. Oh man, I, I don't, I can't remember the last time I seen deer activity like we did. There was young bucks chasing everywhere. Well, it sounds to me like with all this action going, we better go back and I'm, I make a gourmet peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> we can stuff one of them real quick in, get you back out. Perfect. Let's do it. Hey, hey! I am literally yelling at the top of my lungs, just some sort of loud noise that makes this deer turn and look. It's all about big bucks and box cars on Winchester's Whitetail Revolution. Hunter Allen Treadwell's in Oklahoma with ducks and bucks. You know, Brady's got a heck of an operation going here, and, and if you want some of the best whitetail hunting in Oklahoma, or even a waterfowl hunter, you know, give him a call, and I promise you won't be disappointed. There's very few outfitters that I will personally guarantee you a hunt of a lifetime, and with Brady, you'll have that. We have a quality operation, low pressure, don't do a ton of hunters, but I, you know, I feel like I'd rather have less hunters with quality hunts than I would run a lot of people through camp and some guys not get that quality hunt. So far for Alan, it's been nothing less than quality. He's in for a quick bite to eat with Brady, who has him in the hot seat before he's back to the box car. Hey, one more thing before you go in there and eat. Uh, wasn't this full last night? Last night this was full, What? and I left and came back. What happened? It, it could have been, uh, could have been Hank. You cut him up and fed him to him? Yes. Okay, that's good. Good excuse. It wasn't me. Yeah. Hold on. Why don't you choke that thing down and let's get back out to the old uh, box car, what do you say? The way the deer were moving, I wanted to be there. You know, I needed to be out and hunting as much as possible with the high hopes that deer we seen the night before coming past our old box car, maybe another one, because he did tell me on the phone, he texted me a couple days ago. Brady sent me a text and he said he's seen a non-typical deer. And I didn't get a real good look at it. I just knew it had some extra stuff on it. I just kind of named him the box car buck. Who would have thought that we'd be sitting in a box car? in the middle of a CRP in Oklahoma trying to kill a monster whitetail. It's not your everyday run-of-the-mill place to sit. Crazy grinds. Probably the weirdest one I was ever on was a windmill, which is a dangerous, stupid thing to do, but I was a kid, I was young, stupid, and dangerous. <laughs> so I climb up that windmill, and of course, you gotta make sure the windmill doesn't take you out while you're up there, so you need to know how to stop that. I don't recommend windmills. If you've got an old wrecked car or something sitting out in a pasture somewhere and a deer are walking nearby, make it, make it be your blind. You don't have to set anything up special. You think about deer hunting, you think about tree stand hunting, you think about blind hunting. Nobody ever thinks about boxcar hunting. I love this setup. With the deer activity we've seen this morning, I, I suspect that it's gonna continue and these deer are gonna be chasing all day long. There was one eight-pointer that chased around. You know, we kind of nicknamed him Busybody because he'd come one way and push a doe, then he'd come another way by himself. Here comes a buck. Pretty good buck. Pretty good buck. Coming right through here. Hold on. <laughs> That's a Busybody again. Look at him pushing that doe. He's finding a doe now. And with the rut going on like that, I knew it was just a matter of time before we seen a big, mature deer. There he goes, still dogging that doe just as far as I can see. He is a busy sucker, isn't he? There's more deer right there where Busybody come from. Buck and a doe, that's a good buck. That's a pretty good buck right there. I can't tell a whole lot about him. And the closer he gets, I realize that I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot this deer if I get a chance at all. He's gonna come this way. He's gonna come the same way Busybody came. 
and this deer comes across and, and he comes run, running in front of me and I get the red field binoculars up and I'm looking at him and I start trying to stop this deer and I start with a couple whistles, you know, trying to whistle at him to get him to stop. Hey! 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 I am literally yelling at the top of my lungs and I'm trying to make a loud noise to get him to stop, just some sort of loud noise that makes this deer turn and look. We're watching this dude leave and I'm going, this this may be my only shot that I had in Oklahoma to kill a good mature whitetail. And obviously I was feeling a, a, a pretty high level of disappointment. And I'm replaying that in my mind and I'm going, you know, could I have shot him running off? This was a pretty close shot, but he was with that doe and he was back and forth and moving around. You know, he was he would have zigged when I zagged basically is probably what would have happened. And, and it just didn't feel comfortable taking that shot and elected not to. That's him, that's him, that's the same buck that just come through here. In the back of my mind, I'm going, is there any way I'm gonna be able to get this guy to stop? I couldn't stop him the first time through. Can I stop him the second time through? Hey! Winchester's Whitetail Revolution is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Code Blue, perfecting the science of hunting. Winchester Repeating Arms, the guns that work. Threadfield, the soul of the American hunter. And by Browning, the best there is. Alan Treadwell's hanging his head after losing sight of a runaway buck in Oklahoma. And I, I watch this deer, you know, I feel like he's gone forever. I mean, what in the world, why would this deer ever come back my direction? You know, it's, he, now he's a, he's a half a mile from me right now. And really, you know, I did everything that I possibly could have other than taking a running shot. In my book, not the shot to take, you know, at that, at that moment in time, not gonna take a running shot. So I elected to let him go, and I'm sitting there with my tail tucked, you know, kind of reevaluating this, this situation. And what do I see coming? These big old horns coming back across this field. That's him, that's him, that's the same buck that just come through here. I don't know if I can get him stopped this time or not. All right, here he comes. He's running right at us. That is definitely him. Every bounce that he takes getting closer to us, he just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. In the back of my mind, I'm going, is there any way I'm going to be able to get this guy to stop? I couldn't stop him the first time through. Can I stop him the second time through? I'm gonna have to stop him again. He's running, he has not stopped yet. He's down, <laughs> yes sir. Redfield rifle scopes are made right here in the U.S. of A. They're 100% waterproof, 100% fog proof. These scopes can take anything Mother Nature can dish their way. With quarter minute of an angle finger click adjustments, it allows you to quickly and easily sight your rifle in while you're at the range. A generous eye relief gives you quick target acquisition. You top that with the illuminator lens system. When that trophy buck steps out, you know you're gonna have the clearest possible view of him. That's why we do it right there. It don't get any better than that. Hey! And, and lo and behold, he was probably going down right there. You know, I, I was raised by my daddy that if a deer is still on his feet, you put another in any. Once you commit to killing an animal, you do everything that you can to kill that animal. You, you owe it to that animal to kill him as quickly and as cleanly and as efficiently as possible. And buddy, when that Winchester ballistic tip hits him in the shoulder, they're going down and you just sit back as a hunter and go, man, you know, it come together. You know, thank the good Lord for, for giving me the opportunity to be able to harvest this deer and, and be a part of one of the best days of red activity that I've been a part of in a long time. I gotta go see if I can find this dude. And when we get up there, he had a lot more times than I thought he did. He had 14 scorable points that were at least an inch or longer. <laughs> Look at that buck right there. <laughs> Ducks and bucks out of the old box car. And of course, I got to give Brady a little bit of a hard time. And I call him and tell him we've killed a real nice 120 inch deer. Uh, if you don't mind, bring the four wheeler in and help me get it out. The buildup was, was about to kill me, really. I mean, and it, he's just waiting and waiting. He won't let me come out there and see it. And he finally, you know, motions me out there, and he's, it's behind him. And I can see it's a, a big body deer right away, and I thought, I hope he's being Allen and kidding with me, and he did shoot a good one. You, uh, you got the gut wagon? I got the gut wagon. You know, it's, 
Uh, do you just do you generally hang out and see our pea fields like this? Yep, I just I shot this doe here <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of this. <laughs> That's a pretty doe. <laughs> and when he moved out of the way and I saw those horns sticking up, it, it was it was unbelievable. I mean, I was excited. Yeah, Lee, look at that. That's that non-typical boxcar buck. Is it really? Remember I called you that night and said there's a non-typical with some trash? Trash and stuff, yeah. funny looking thing. That's him, huh? He's the boxcar <laughs> buck. To come and connect out of the boxcar with the buck he had dubbed the boxcar buck. How's it get any better than that? I told you that old thing would work. <laughs> I can't believe Isn't that, that old amazing? thing worked. That is an awesome deer. I didn't shoot the deer but I was just as happy, or maybe happier, that someone else got to shoot the deer. I just, I, it's just an awesome feeling, and that's really what all this is about, the camaraderie of hunting, the friendships you build, the memories you build, and that one's gonna stick forever. Just a heck of an awesome deer, and I gotta thank Brady, and I gotta thank Ducks and Bucks. This has just an awesome, been an awesome hunt, and I will be back. Is, is that bread supposed to have green spots? Is yeah, that yours does. Ours doesn't. But you have another loaf for everybody else? Yeah, this, this is the same loaf from last year. <laughs> that is neat. Oh, it's horrible. Would you cut it in half for me? No. <laughs> cut it in half. I'll do just like I do my six-year-old daughter, Alan. Perfect. Gotta, gotta cut it in a triangle for you, yep. honey. Perfect. Hey, one thing.